She loves Broadway and classical. And she had a chance to attend an intensive dance training with yeah. the Rockettes in New York. Uh, she was uh, uh, a in Rotarian Idol at the same time that I competed in Rotarian Idol. This is actually her fourth time as a finalist in Rotarian Idol. So very much we're looking forward to her uh, this year. And also her dream is to one day sing and perform on Broadway. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Samantha. Yes. Thank you so much. It's such a wonderful opportunity to be here today. I'm so excited that I get to perform for you. It's so wonderful. I've been wanting to do this ever since the first time that I performed in Rotarian Idol, and so it's just wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank the Rotary Club for all that you guys do for the community and everything. So thank you. Excuse my little bit of raspiness, the weather changes have got my throat a little confused, so, <laughs> so excuse that. But um, my song is called Love Never Dies from the sequel to Phantom of the Opera. And Phantom is my favorite musical. I sang a song last year called Think of Me in it. Um from Cherry and Idol last year, so so it's kind of it's kind of my theme, but <laughs> Um, I love this song, it's really dear to my heart. I feel like it can connect to every person in the audience, every listener. There's some way that somebody can connect to the song. So I hope you enjoy it. It's called Love Never Dies from Game of the Opera, the sequel. <laughs> Your heart, it's 
Great job. We appreciate it. All right, last chance. We're getting ready to draw. Nobody, nobody. All right. It's closed. Bingo board is closed. Are we ready? All right, here we go. First one. Number five. Sorry, Kathy, Charlie, Jeff, Steve, Cliff, Susan. Frank Young, club twice. Myself, wait a second, redraw. Jennifer, Charles, Bob. Charlie Reeves. Number three. Number three. Club four times. Is this you, Mike? Mike? Bob? Cliff? Clem? T. Is this exciting? <laughs> no, you didn't be here in a minute, right? T. Leslie. Couple clubs. Charlie. Bob. A go Heels one. Zero. Zero. A lot of clubs. Charles, myself again. Come on, Sandy. O two. O two. Owen Idol. John Rambo. Steve Malt. Sandy. Mark again. Sandy. John Ross. Nine. Some more clubs. Clem, Marti, and Rosemary. R2. R2. Back half a rotary. It's like a couple of clubs. Charles Young, Ann Williams, Dan Kirby, Jan Bo Miller. Six, right in the middle. Neil, Rambo, Charlie, Sarah, Susan, and a club. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> they are all alive, Mike. Susan, Andy, Bob, Bob, and Lynn. You know, you know how to make two old ladies say, oh shit, get one to say, bingo. <laughs> Four. Carol, Sandy, Mackenzie, and Bill, and a club. L. L. Charles and three clubs. Seven. Michael, Mark, and Kevin. R1. R1. Joe, Bonnie, and a club. Okay, so Mark T is still in, Mark Griffin is still in, Kevin McIntosh, Leslie, and Ann. And four clubs. We raised six hundred and ninety dollars, so the pot's three hundred and forty-five dollars. Eight. Eight. Andy, Leslie, and one of the clubs bite the dust. Oh, 
Oh, one. Oh, one. Right. Mark Teague is gone in one of the clubs. We've got Mark Gerson and Kevin McIntosh left in two clubs. Kevin, Kevin told me if he didn't win, he's going to sue us. <laughs> one. The club is out. <laughs> Somebody's walking out of here with cash. I. <laughs> Ah, uh, Kevin, you're gone. Sorry. Mark Gerson's a winner. Congratulations. I tell you the best news. You got 11 months and 29 days worth of skin. <laughs> Sandy, Mike, thank you. Mark, congratulations. And thank you to everybody for putting in their money and buying some squares. Let's officially get started. Welcome to the Thursday Rotary Club of Hickory. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of the I sing land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims cried from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Linda Lutz has our invocation. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for Rotary that brings together leaders who step forward to take on challenges in our community. We ask, Father God, that you lead us in another successful fundraiser, Rotarian Idol, so that we can continue doing good deeds in this community. Give us the strength to create positive change in the world today. Bless this food and all who prepare and serve it. Amen. Thank you, Linda. Anne has our visiting Rotarians. <laughs> Thank you, President Mark. We have with us today from Lake Hickory, Floyd Lucas, Bonnie Mitchell, and Bonnie even brought a guest with her, Chase Blaylock. Let's welcome these folks. From Catawba Valley, we have Jason Herman. Jason, where are you? There you are. Newton Conover, George Moretz. And, uh, oh yeah, George Rex is talking about And then Betty Howe is visiting us from the Bowling Rock Club. Betty. Welcome. We're happy to have you all. Just to let you know, Jason Herman will be taking over for Jack McCaskill next year. He'll be taking his, be our assistant district governor. So we look forward to that. They'll do a great job. Do we have any guests of Rotarians in the room? Well, I finally get to introduce the guest, and Ann blows my whole deal. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it anyway. But we're really glad to have Bonnie here, a former member of her club, and uh, it's great to have her here. She is with Berkshire Hathaway, as you, most of you know. And um, Chase Blaylock, stand up, Chase. Everybody see you. <laughs> is new to town, working with Bonnie, and uh, she wanted to bring him out and get to know some people and um, see if he might be interested in Rotary. And he lives out in Vail, um, does a little farming, and has come here to work with some real estate. So, welcome, Chad. Thank you. Welcome to both of you again. Two introductions. That's pretty impressive. Do you have any other guests? Linda? Uh, I'd like to welcome back uh, visiting again today, uh, Jim Parker. And uh, Jim is with Catawba uh, Memorial Park in Cremation. <laughs> Do you have any other guests? All right, do we have any announcements? Oh, I was going to do it after announcements. Is that okay? Susan? Um, by popular demand, I'm making an announcement. Um, as you know, Kingston Residence in Hickory is an independent and assisted living community. And for quite some time, we have had a waiting list. 
And I'm happy to say that we now have some apartments available if you'd ever like to stop by. We also do respite stays. Um, we have 24-hour nursing, nurse practitioners. So um, come have lunch at Kingston with us. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other announcements? John? Uh, just on behalf of my colleagues at the Broyhill Center in Lenore, tonight there's a rather special event. Uh, probably a lot of you as young folks watched the film Fantasia by Walt Disney, or maybe you saw the latest version in 2000 of Fantasia. Well, tonight you have the opportunity to watch Fantasia in high definition at the Broyhill Center with live orchestral accompaniment. The Czech National Orchestra from the Czech Republic will be at Broyhill. Uh, the tickets are $45 for adults, which is much better than the $100 that you had to pay in New York to see it. It's a, an official Disney production. That's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, but I'm going to go because I love Fantasia, especially the part where he goes, Mr. Stakowski, Mr. Stakowski. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yes. Peter, we have a student guest with us today. Thank you, Mark. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, one of our students from Lenore Ryan University. This is uh, Cassidy Joyner. Uh, Cassidy is a, a sophomore uh, at Lenore Ryan. She uh, grew up in Dobson, North Carolina, Surrey County. Um, and uh, the top thing she put on her bio, and I can understand why, is that she is a, a guard on our women's basketball team. She says she's a shooting guard, is that correct? And I asked her if she's a starter. She said, next year, I think. So uh, uh, we, we hope that works out. Um, she is uh, majoring in exercise science, uh, may do a double major in business administration as well. Uh, she's involved in several clubs on our campus. She's vice president of what's called Bear Nation. And can, can you want to just talk a little bit about what Bear Nation is? Can I put you on the spot? Um, Bear Nation is something we started this year um, to get students and all athletes going to all home events, girls and boys. So we started a student section and we let the school vote on what they wanted it to be called and they voted on Bear Nation. And so we give out free t-shirts, we did an opening like a midnight march, not march, a midnight um, madness to open it up for basketball season and we had, we introduced like all sports teams. We um, take names when you come to the sporting events, so you get points. Swimming isn't very active with people going to it, so they're worth more points, and basketball games are worth less points, and football games are worth less points, and like golf is worth more, and tennis is worth more, because it's hard to get students to go out there. And whoever has the most points at the end of the year gets like a $500 gift card, and um, other students get prizes too, like second and third. So we're just trying to get people more involved and to stay on campus and be active at the games and stuff. Thank you for explaining that. She's also a member of uh, what's called Campus Crusade for Christ, or CREW, and FCA. Uh, she's done a lot of community service, both uh, I think here in Hickory and maybe in our hometown as well. Uh, she's worked at the soup kitchen, I believe, here in Hickory the last couple of years. Uh, reads to kindergartners at Oakwood Elementary School, uh, does Toys for Tots and Zumba um, for the past two years, uh, field day at Jenkins Elementary. She's worked three times at the Christian Thrift Shop. Uh, and ever since she was eight years old, she's uh, volunteered to work the Special Olympics Handicap Camp back uh, near her hometown. And one year she actually coached the Special Olympics basketball team. Uh, she's got a number of jobs on campus. She's very busy, obviously. Referees intramural sporting events, referee at the Y uh, for some activities there. Lifeguard uh, for a campground in her hometown called The Home Place. And uh, babysits in her free time. Do you have any free time? A little bit, a little bit, good. Um, her future plan, she actually is uh, hoping to go to Ecuador next summer. Uh, to get some experience, some clinical hours in occupational therapy. And currently, even though she's only a sophomore, she's thinking that when she graduates from Lenore Ryan, she would like to uh, 
enter an occupational therapy program and someday become a pediatric occupational therapist. So um, we're glad to have you here, Cassidy, and please join me in welcoming you. Welcome. 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 Sounds like you got a full plate there. Charles has our Sunshine Committee report, and I'm going to have a few more announcements as he works his way up here. we got a full meeting today, so make sure we have adequate time for, for Hal. I do have, there's a few calendars on your tables. There was two or three of them. Just has kind of a list of events for the remainder of our, of our rotary year this year, if anybody wants to pick those up. Uh, I also want to let everybody know we've got a big program next week with our speaker that's going to be talking about Normandy. She has over 800 stories. I don't think she's going to tell them all but she's probably going to tell quite a few, but we'll be starting early next week. So we'll be getting going pretty early, probably right around 12 or shortly thereafter. Give everybody a heads up. Helen Horn is on the tables again this week. Rotarian Idol. We got just a few days away. Sandy, do you want to make a state, say something? Just one thing I'd like to say uh, in, uh, to show our appreciation to our staff in terms of that care of us every single week, we would like to give complimentary I think that's awesome. That's a great idea. And still buy your tickets if you have not done so. Perfect lead-in. We need everybody to purchase their tickets. We're doing really well on sponsorship. Uh, we've done they've done a tremendous job cutting costs. Mike, Sandy, and the entire committee has done a great job this year. We have a good chance to raise a lot more money than we than we did last year. And last year we raised fifty six thousand dollars. So uh, we're really on pace. So we need everybody to help out and pitch in. Stop Hunger Now is this Saturday, and I think they still need folks for this afternoon. I mean, for the afternoon, if you want to sign up, and they're obviously still taking donations. And the scholarship committee is still accepting uh, applications until March 18th. So you can see Ann Williams, and those are also on the website. And there's a couple over on the table over there if you'd like to grab them. Without further ado, Charles, Sunshine Report. <laughs> I'm, I'm usually nervous enough about doing this, I seriously am, but today you got Hal Rose shows up, an old friend that knows more about me than I do, and then my little neighbor shows up to sing, and that discloses a talent y'all got no idea that I have. I've been working with her on voice lessons for about three years. Uh, <laughs> Who said that? Somebody said that she's overcoming well. <laughs> the uh, I was supposed to do this last week, and I was uh, called out of town for an emergency at Ballhead Island. And, uh, I forgot who has birthdays today, and I know uh, who has a birthday today. Do you have a birthday this week? Mark, yes. Yesterday, yeah. All uh, right, Mark. Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas did, I know. And then I remember John Clark. I remember I remember John was on there because, you know, I know John's not here. I'm not going to ask if John's here. He hadn't been here in the last three or four presidents that we've had. <laughs> and, uh, this can be repeated to John. Uh, and I'm not talking about presidents of Rotary. I'm talking about the presidents of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> um, this quickly, let me say that a friend of mine texted me the day before yesterday, and he said that when he met Mrs. Wright, he had no idea that her first name was Always. <laughs> and, but fortunately, my wife and I, my wife of 51 years, that. Uh, well, the victim of being with me for 51 years, I guess. Uh, we've worked out, we, we leased, we've got it straight about the automobile. And when Elaine always drives, she's the driver anytime we're in the car together. And uh, I love that. Just, you know, and all I have to do is just sit there and hold a wheel, and she just, you know, she drives. <laughs> Men and women are really different, as we all know, and we look at things in a different way. And for example, if, if Laura and Kay and Sarah went out to eat, they would call each other Laura, Kay, and Sarah. 
But if Mike, Dave, and John went out to eat, it would be Fat Boy, Bubba, and Wild Man. <laughs> when the bill came for the lunch, Fat Boy, Bubba, and Wild Man would all throw down $20 a piece for a $32 bill, and neither one of them would want any change, wouldn't take any change anyway. But if the same bill came for the ladies, they'd be three pocket calculators would come out. <laughs> a woman has the last word in any argument. Anything that the man says after that is just starting a new argument. <laughs> <laughs> but out of all the differences between men and women, sometimes, a lot of times, happy families come out. And George Bernard Shaw once said, a happy family is but an earlier heaven. And I think there's truth to that. One final birthday that we forgot to honor last week, this um, Rotary International was 111 years old last week. Uh, when old Paul Harris got his buddies together up there in Chicago to have lunch and had no idea what he was starting, I guess. And, I don't know if anybody, how many people know it, but I believe that the Rotary Foundation is the biggest scholarship program in the world, including the Rhodes Scholarship and those others. So there's a lot, there's a lot of good things happening with Rotary, and we can all be proud of it. <clears throat> Does anybody have an update on uh, Charl Charlie Dixon? He's very sick. Yeah, not, not, doing not, well. not doing well? Not good, he's at Baptist. So, so please keep him and his family in your, in your thoughts and prayers. Philip Reed has our program today. Hi. After John Ross put in a plug for Fantasia, I thought I'd put in a plug. My wife and I saw Ain't Misbehaving at the Hickory Community Theater this week. Great <coughs> cast of locals, including one school board member. All of them, I believe, it's the first time they would admit to having been in a local musical. But it's great. It's funny. It's uh, some great music. And, and um, it was a rarity to find it uh, as good as, as it seemed to me that it was. Uh, right here in Hickory and folks that are not uh, regulars in the community theater. Um, I'm proud to be able today to introduce our speaker. Most of you know him. Many people spoke to him as you came in. But when I moved to Hickory a couple of years ago, I was tuning around the radio, heard this mellow voice coming out of my dash, sounded like Mel Torme for those of you <laughs> old enough to remember Mel Torme. And um, he said his name, Hal Rowe. And I thought, interesting guy. Well, I started tuning in early in the morning because I was driving a granddaughter to uh, school sometimes. And he was always interviewing somebody local, filled in, uh, you know, blanks I had about different organizations, different people. Um, and it was always informative and always uh, just the heart of the local community. Then I walk in today and our president, Mark, shows me that in the newsletter for club presidents, uh, there was recognition for how for his 15 years of being um, basically the voice of this community on uh, WHKY. And you know we'll all see him at uh, Rotarian Idol in a few days. But he's a guy who uh, loves this community and uh, to me is truly the voice of this community. So please help me today to welcome our local uh, guy who's an expert on uh, all of us and everything, Hal Rowe. Thank you all so much for inviting me again, again today. I know some of you are probably getting sick of some presentations, so I figured I'd do a little something different today. We'll have some fun. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry I don't know your name, sir, the gentleman in the tie, Lenore Ryan University. Great pipes. Whatever you're doing now, if it didn't work out for you, broadcast it. Broadcast it. Yeah, good job. And Bear Nation, just want to let you know that the unofficial student, uh, if they allow alumni, John Hall has 4,982 Bear Nation points. <laughs> he attends most of those that I heard. Savannah, wonderful presentation from you. Savannah, ladies and gentlemen, wonderful. 
Charles, thanks a lot for that great sunshine. It was very, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, you probably found some uh, swag on your tables today when you came in. A little uh, WHKY uh, uh, notepad and, and an actual pen. And when they gave those pins out at the studio, they, they came up to me and they said, Hal, what do, you, what do you think of the new pin? And finally I found out that you twisted it to get it open. And that was the first challenge. And then the second part was, well, these erasers aren't worth a darn. And uh, I found out they weren't erasers at all. If you have a smartphone, you'll figure out how to use those. It's actually stylus. And so uh, if you would please turn your pad, take your pad and your pen, and uh, turn off your uh, digital devices, actually for some of the younger folks in the uh, crowd. This was the original way that we actually used to take notes and communicate. We would actually write and print on these little pads of paper. I know it's kind of old school for some of you. And some of you are like, hey, this is cool, actually a pad. So what we're going to do is, uh, I got some news for you here. The Calvary's not coming, okay? Uh, EDC, Chamber of Commerce, City of Hickory, I love them all. They're all great folks, but they're not going to solve our problems. I hate to tell you that. We got a situation with trying to get young folks in the community. We got a situation with jobs, depending on who you listen to. We need people to fill jobs, and we need jobs for the people we have. Calvary's not coming. We have to do it. And you're the folks who are going to do it in our community. It's going to be Rotary. It's going to be you folks. It's going to be you as individuals who are going to save this community. And I feel certain that we can. But I found out something that when I first came back, there were a lot of things I did not know about the community, and a lot of things have changed in the community. So what I have with me today is going to be interactive. I'm going to wake up after that delicious chocolate cake that I passed on today. Cleaner shrunk my clothes again, the holiday season. Uh, it's called the uh, Know Your Market Talent Relatability Quiz. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over this. I'm going to give you some questions. Some of them relate directly to the industry and to radio. But some of them relate to our community. Not going to be a score on this test. If we have a few minutes, we can come back and go over some of the answers. If you don't know all of them, John Hall, just raise your hand there, John. John will help you out with these. Uh, you may know some of them, but I think you may be surprised at how much you do know, or little you know, about our community. So we'll get started. Again, some of these really don't matter to you, but think about radio. Think about your place of work. What time do most people get up in our area? What time do people get out of bed? Go ahead and jot that down. What time do you think people get up? What time do most people start work in our community? Think about our community. What hour has the greatest number of listeners on to, to radio? Okay. When does rush hour begin and end? Is there a rush hour in our area? When does it begin and when does it end? Where do most traffic jams most likely occur and when? Here's an interesting one for you. What's the worst intersection in town? If someone was coming into town and you were talking to them, where would you tell them to avoid? Where are the speed traps? There's usually an, an officer or a chief or something here. I, I, I don't know. Where are, the, where are the speed traps in town? Okay, here's something that you want to tell people who are moving into town. What, what are three local places, streets, or people's name that are most likely to be mispronounced by newcomers. If you're on the air, the last thing you want to do is talk about an accident at the one card exit. I agree. <laughs> Which ones are going to be mispronounced? Think about that. What are the, th are the three biggest tour attractions in the area? This actually happened to me. Someone said, I'm coming into Hickory. What are we going to do? Think about that. If someone's coming into Hickory and you're going to visit with them, they're going to visit with you, what are you going to do? And other than those three greatest tourist attractions, write down the last time that you were there. When was the last time you attended one of our area's tourist attractions? Jot these down because you're going to want to keep these in your pocket. You're going to want to keep them in your purse because there's going to be someone who's going to ask you one of these questions. From personal experience, Name three popular vacation spots for local residents. Okay, that's two, because we know Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Went to church, where I used to go to church, and asked somebody, well, where's this Smith family I heard so much about? They said, well, they're up and down Baptist. Y'all have heard this, I know. Up and down Baptist, yeah, up in the mountains and down to the beach. 
because <laughs> you've heard it, but for the two people who did this great joke in it. By the way, I've got the greatest joke in the world that I can't tell here, but Kathy Greathouse knows it, ask her. She'll tell you the greatest joke in the world. She memorized it, she uses it, I think, she told me off. All right, continuing on. Who are the three biggest employers in our area? Jot down who you think are the three biggest employers. Do you know? Why does it matter? Why should you care who the th three biggest employers are in town? Well, if somebody's coming into town and they want to know that, or they ask you, it would be vital that you know that information. Who are the people who are your customers? Who are the people who may be working for you? If someone brings in a car for an oil change and they're working for a certain group or organization, wouldn't you like that group or organization to find out more about your place of business? Who are the three largest employers? When do shifts begin, end, and change? And of course, we can tell this is not from this market specifically. Is this a union town and which ones? We'll just skip right on over that one. How's the overall business climate? Good? Stagnant? How's the growth? Is downtown dead or alive after five? What are the biggest shopping malls? It says malls here. How do they do? Where do most listeners shop? If you're a young lady or a lady and you're out and you're thinking to yourself, where do I buy a dress? Where do I buy a pair of pants? Where do you go? Gentlemen, where do you go? We all know that around Hickory, you got to go to Mount Pilot to get a good suit. <laughs> got some Andy Griffith fans good in, in the audience. So, well, <laughs> so take it over the clear, get a clean spot. Where do uh, where do you go for a suit? Where do we shop? And how does the weather affect local businesses? In what direction is the town growing for business and residents? What are the principal agricultural products in our area or industrial? Does anybody know what's growing in those beautiful fields as you're heading out to Vail? As you're heading out there and you say, well, that sure is a pretty green field. I know it ain't corn, but I ain't sure what it is. Soy beans. Soy beans. A lot of soy beans in the air. No doubt about it. There's a lot of soy bean farm, farmers around here. No doubt about it. Um, how about the significant construction going on in our area? I was thinking about this before I came over. I know one place where there's a lot of construction going on. How about you? Where's construction going on in the area and what's being built there? Do you know? Do you just see a sign? Dollar General. Dollar General. There's a lot of Dollar Generals. How about Publix over off 29th? Yep. Big construction going over there. Got uh, used to be uh, uh, with Jim Peoples and, and Pope. Their veterinarian practice moving right down the road. Did you all know that? Did you all know what that building was? Somebody's in the car and they ask you, you're Rotarians, you're plugged in, you're supposed to know the answers to these questions. Think about these. You might want to have one of these for your own company. All right, we're getting around here to some of the, uh, what are the local sports, biggest local sports teams in the area? Where do you go for local sports? I think we all know the crawdads, but let's think about some other ones. How about recreational sports? What are the big athletic rivalries? John, who's the biggest rivalry for Lenore Ryan University? Think about those. Who's the game that everybody goes to? Name three players on your local college team. Can you do that? Can you name three players? You may be able to name three players from Carolina, but can you name three players from Lenore Ryan University? How about the CVCC baseball team? You know three players from there? Who's the coach? What's the win-loss record? We just had a new athletic director appointed at Lenore Ryan University. Does anybody know their name? Is it a guy or a gal? I was going to say, good job. There you go. These are things in our community that are we paying attention to? And why do we need to pay attention to them? Is it important to the future of our community? I would contend that it does. What are the names and locations of the three high schools in our area? Name three, and then give me their mascots. Name three, and give me their mascots. Can you do that? By the way, uh, Saturday, go Hickory High Red Tornadoes. And then, uh, and then hopefully the next week, state championships. Name three that we have in our area. Name popular restaurants in our area for lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Where do you go for Sunday brunch? You've got family visiting. They come into town. Where do you go for Sunday brunch? Think about that. What are the two best places in town to people watch? Well, there's a lot of places to people watch. Absolutely. But where are the two best places? What local restaurants... Do people go to to eat out or to take out? Where's the biggest takeout place in town? What's the location of one 24-hour drugstore or a 24-hour supermarket in our town? I don't know about you, but back when I was young and wild, I was young and wild. 
<laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, I might just want some cantaloupe. <laughs> I, I think I might want some cantaloupe. I might want some ice cream with that, too. There's a 24 hour supermarket, you can get some uh, cantaloupe and ice cream. Two o'clock in the morning. Just one real quick radio story. Since Floyd Lucas is here today. First star of the show, Floyd Lucas was kind enough to come on the uh, show with me. And if you've been on the show or listened to the show, you know we have breaks. So we did our first 15 minutes on the air, and then uh, Floyd Lucas kicked back and looked at me in that rich, bourbon-soaked voice of his. <laughs> kicked back in the chair and said, Hal, last time we sat down, wasn't you asking the questions? <laughs> True story. Appreciate all you did for me, sir. <laughs> really, really do. What's the best activity that's free in our area for families? What's the best activity? How about for singles? What's the best activity for singles? Someone's, your son or daughter comes back from school. What's to do, mom or dad? Where are you going to send them? Where do you want to send them? And what would they do? What are the local status symbols in our town? The neighborhoods to live in. What's the club to go to? What's the current fad? How about local scandals? What are the ones we whisper about? Those are the ones that we kind of want to keep on the, uh, on the down low. But we know about. How about those? Who are the most colorful political and media old timers in our area? Name any two performers or shows which are coming to town in the next 30 days. John Gordon Ross just told us about Fantasia Rotarian tonight. Idol. Rotarian Idol. Very good. Masterworks concert coming up. Can anybody name the guest performers that will be coming with Take Masterworks? Three. Anybody know? Take three. Close. Time. Close. Time for three. Time for three. Time Very good. They're fantastic. Check them out online. You're Rotarians. You should know all the answers to all these questions because you're plugged in. And you're the people who are going to save the area. And you better be well informed. And if these questions don't work for you, try to find the ones that will be important for you, for your community, that you'll know the answer to when people come visit. You may be sitting at Homer's one morning. You may be sitting at a restaurant one night or at a bar. And someone asks you some questions about your community. It may be the person who's going to be the next CEO for the big business moving into town and wants to find out about these things. Wouldn't it be nice if you knew some of them? Um, we'll go, well, we're not going to go over the uh, uh, radio personalities <laughs> and all that stuff here. Local, no, well, no, the local newspaper, of course. But we're not going to go some of these cable channels. What uh, stations do people watch? I understand you had somebody in who talked about the high and low temperatures in our area. Pretty good. Was that raised weather that came in? I understand that was a great presentation. A lot better than yours, Hal. I heard that out there. You know, I was going to, uh, I was going to do a presentation. They asked me to do this, and we've all, you know, I've told you all the stories about being backstage at the concerts and, and meeting the people and doing all that kind of stuff. And I thought they don't want to hear that stuff again. They certainly don't want to hear about the jail time in Myrtle Beach. That story gets old. Uh, but probably what they would want to hear, I want to do something that would engage them. So I said, I know what I'll do. I'll tell them about my hero in broadcasting. I'll tell them about the person I admire in broadcasting and the person I think the most of. And I thought to myself, when I said the words Fred Rogers, I could see the phones coming out, texting the ex-wife, doing anything but hearing about Fred Rogers. He is my I love brother. Fred. Well, I love thank Fred you very Rogers. much. Yeah. God bless your heart. Fred Rogers. But uh, not today. We're going to finish this up. And I'll try to be I'll try to finish up briefly so we get some of the answers here. Who's the, uh, what areas are the wealthy and most, okay, here you go. What are the biggest hospitals and their general location? Got somebody right over here I know who knows about a local hospital. But how many people still could call at Catawba Memorial Hospital? That's not the name of the hospital. Can I give you the real name of the hospital? Catawba There you go, CVMC, that's exactly right. Oh, you know, over here at Catawba Hospital, where? I don't know where Catawba Hospital is. And if you tell somebody new in town, you yeah, we're heading up to Catawba Hospital. They don't know where that is. The old high school. They're going to go see a show at the old high school. What? Oh, you've been in Salt Block. Gotcha. What's the mayor's name? Can you name three people on your city council? I think most people know the, the mayor's name. How about three people on your city council? Can you do that? How about three people on the Catawba County Board of Commissioners? Can you do that? Think about those people. I think we can do probably pretty much the governor who represents us in the legislature. Congress, House, party affiliations. Name the two biggest ethnic minorities in our market and percentage of the total population. Where do they work and live? What's the population of the city of Hickory? 41. What's the population of Catawba County? 
What's the population of the uh, standard metropolitan area or the MSA? Boy, I'll tell you, we got some smart people here. Take this table right down here. They'll be glad, glad to help you out with that. Um, what city or state do locals make fun of? What do we make fun of in our town? If we said, if we're telling a good joke, and we say, well, these two boys came down from, where do you put it? Road hiss. Road hiss. <laughs> Road hiss. I'm not going to say. I'm not, I would not dare get into that because I probably got listeners there who would say, I can't believe he said that. But who do we make fun of? And the last thing today is why is this a great place to live? Have you asked yourself that question? A lot of you can live anywhere in the United States you want to live. Great deal of mobility here. A lot of people can seek careers in other areas. A lot of people can go anywhere they want to. You can live in Atlanta, most of you, if you wanted to. You can pack up and move out. A lot of different places that you can live. Why do you live here? Why is this a great area? Why to ask yourself that question and, and answer it for yourself. Now, anybody got any great answers that came out from this for the little quiz we just did? At least I think everybody stayed awake after the chocolate cake. <laughs> Any great answers that anybody would like to contribute, just raise your hand or shout it out. I don't know the answer, but who are the three biggest employers? We all have some different ideas. What do you think the three biggest employers are? Hospitals. Uh, I write down Lenora and Catawba Valley and Corning, but I don't um, I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to take this test because I don't know half the answers on here. But I believe it's the, uh, it's the hospitals, the school system, the county government, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Is that correct? I believe the uh, the school systems, of course, in county government, but I believe those are the ones. I'm not sure. Kathy, I don't know the answers to this. I was just asking the question. <laughs> I actually took this test. That was exactly right. We just can't come up. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to be here. Before I leave, I want to thank Rotary so much for the uh, Paul Harris Award and all the different groups that came together for that. Quite an honor. Very humbling. I want to thank you all very much for that. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, be engaged and, and to work with Rotarian Idol again. I swear it just gets better every year. And there's a great group of folks who work together on this, put a lot of hard work into it. And I know some people don't put any work into it at all. They just write a big check. So God bless you. You know, could not do it with all the hard work, could not do it without the big checks. So thank everybody in this room who does that and who makes these wonderful funds available for the international work and for the local work as well. And thank you for taking the time to be in Rotary because it is, it's a commitment of time. It's an obligation. So thank you for what you do for our community, and thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Thanks. Thank you, Hal. Thank you for everything that you do for, for Rotary and for MC and Rotary and Idaho. We really appreciate it. And thank you for a thought-provoking program. Don't forget about your loose and folding change in the cart buckets, please. So, Susan, what do we got today? President Mark, we have 44 cards with two jokers remaining. We received uh, $68 today for a total of $617. Hal, okay. chance to make a new friend? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Last three are zero, two, three. We got a winner in the back. Come on down. If you want to win, that's a good table to sit at. Go ahead and grab, take one card. If you get the ace of spades, then you, you win a percentage of the pot. Two of spades, oh. but you do get a free lunch. Thank you. Congratulations, see, it's worth the trip today. Happy to have you. Right, if we could please stand and join me in the four-way test.